Huckleberry will go over a review from last week. You'll find out what the secret is for today. You'll watch a skit, a lesson, and then Steelhead will do some activities with you later. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Let's review what we learned last time. First, we defined one word that started with an O, and it was the word organism. An organism means any living thing. We also learned what an ecosystem is. Do you remember the action from last week's secret? We have living things and non-living things working together to form a community. To form a community. To form a community. I'm gonna do it one more time. This time I'm gonna do it with all the actions exaggerated. Exaggeration. Ecosystems. Ecosystems. Are living things. And non-living things working together. To form a community. To form a community. To form a community. Ha! Oh yeah, you guys got it. Okay, so we had organism, we had ecosystem. We also learned about some of the structures in your ecosystem. Take a minute to think back to those structures. Okay, I think we're ready to move on to lesson two. Which is energy. The sun is the source of energy for all living things. So the action for today goes like this. Energy. The sun is the source of energy for all living things. Energy for all living things. Okay, this time we're doing a slow motion. Energy, energy. Energy. The sun is the source of energy for all living things. So by the end of this video, you should know what plants need for photosynthesis, and you should have a pretty good idea of the food chain. Up next, the skit. Welcome to this special edition of the game show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? My name is Leif Greenson, and this is Alan Trebek. We are your hosts today. In this game, three contestants will compete against you, the smartest fifth graders in the gorge, to answer the questions correctly. All of today's questions are about energy, where it comes from, and where it goes. Now, let's welcome Buzz, our first contestant. Next, we need a volunteer. B pick me, pick me! How about you, young man? Come on down! <laughs> Here is how this game show works. I will read you the question. When you think you know the answer, raise your hand. Uh, hello. Um, uh, just a minute. Can I just... I just need to get sorted here. Oh my gosh. I just... Oh gosh, I spilled my coffee. Um, sorry Buzz, we've got to get started here. Our first question is, 
What is the source of energy for all living things? In other words, where does all the energy for life come from? I know. I know. What? Well, well, I'm not. I'm out of coffee. <clears throat> I'm out of coffee. I need a refill immediately. But as we know, all energy in life comes from coffee. Wow. Well, that is obviously not the right answer. Kids, what do you say? Um. All, all energy comes from the sun. <gasps> The sun is the source of energy for all living things. Students get one point, adults get zero. Our next contestant is Noah Tall! And now we need two more volunteers. Uh, pick me, pick me! Um, alright! Same as before, folks. I will read the question. When you know the answer, raise your hand. <clears throat> I have a doctorate. A medical degree, a bachelor's degree, three master's degrees, and I'm a lawyer. There is no way I'm going to lose. I have been going to school for 50 years. Okay, Smarty, we'll see about that. Your question is, can all organisms use energy directly from the sun or only certain types of organisms. Uh, I don't remember learning this in law school. Well, you may be smart, but you obviously didn't pay attention in fifth grade. Let's see if the students can help you out. What's your answer? Um, only green plants can use energy directly from the sun. That is correct. Only green plants can use energy directly from the sun. What? Only green plants? But, but then how do I get energy? How do you get your energy? I eat frosted flakes. You had frosted flakes for breakfast this morning. Yeah, and dinner last night. Where do frosted flakes come from? Aisle 12. <laughs> Aisle 12? At the grocery store? Yeah. So what are frosted flakes made of? Um, it's actually only two ingredients, frost and flakes. What's the frost made out of? Um, pure, unadulterated sugar. Sugar, see? Yeah. Sugar. And where does sugar come from? Sugar cane. And where does sugar cane come from? The ground? Uh, yeah. What? Sugar yeah. cane is a plant? Yeah. A green plant? Yeah. That gets its energy from the sun? Yeah, that's it. Wow. Okay, you guys are right. So all energy does come from the sun. Glad you learned something today, Noah. Thanks for joining us. Our final contestant is Ollie Goody. And now we need two more volunteers. Hmm. Pick me. We're going to mix things up a bit now. This time, write your answer on this card. Dude, I love trees. That's why I live here. I'm gonna totally own this question. Now, don't get ahead of yourself now. Here is your question. Only green plants can use energy directly from the sun, but to use it, they have to change the sun's energy into sugar. They do so through a process called photosynthesis. Can you all say that with me? Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, good. Now, plants need three ingredients for photosynthesis. Will you each write down one of the ingredients? Here's your card to write down. Good, now please read and show your answers. Hmm, <laughs> sun, water, and I heart plants. Yeah. Well, sun and water are correct. But what do you mean? How's I heart plants not correct? I love plants. They love me. We're so connected. But not connected enough to know the final ingredient of photosynthesis, which is carbon dioxide. Sun, water, and carbon dioxide are the ingredients for plants to turn the sun's energy into sugar energy that they can use. Wait, man, wait. I breathe out carbon dioxide. 
Are you saying plants use carbon dioxide from me? Well, I'm even more connected to nature than I thought. I gotta go find some trees, man. Students three and adults zero. You guys truly are the smartest fifth graders in the gorge. Thanks for playing, and we'll see you all next week. I'm Tree Mech. This is Leaf. Good night, America. Hi. For today's lesson, we're going to talk about something called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the way that plants make energy in order to survive. And they need three things in order to do photosynthesis. They need sun, water, and carbon dioxide. So sun obviously comes from the sky, water comes from the roots, and carbon dioxide is in the air. And we have a way that we can shorten water and carbon dioxide to make them easier to remember. Water can be shortened to H2O. You might have heard this one before. And what that means is that there's two hydrogen atoms, so H2, and one oxygen atom. And similarly, for carbon dioxide, we have one carbon and two oxygens, carbon dioxide. So these three things are coming together, and there's a chemical reaction that happens inside of the plant's leaves. And that helps them to create sugar. And that's what they use for their own energy. But they also make something else. They make oxygen, or O2, and they release that out into the air. And you might know that humans, we need oxygen in order to breathe. So we breathe in and we use the oxygen from the air. And when we breathe out, we breathe out carbon dioxide, which plants use in order to help them survive. So plants and animals have an awesome helping relationship through carbon dioxide and oxygen. We said that plants need sun, water, and carbon dioxide in order to make energy for themselves. But what about soil? All these plants that I have have soil in the pot. Do all plants need soil to grow? Think about that for a minute. The answer is no they don't. And I have an example right here for you. This is a cutting from one of my plants that I went ahead and just put in a jar of water. And if you look right here, you can see that all of these roots have grown. And this plant is actually doing really well. It's grown a bunch of new leaves since I put it in this jar. And there's other plants too that don't need any soil to grow. Let's think of some more examples. Ooh, what about a cactus? Plants that live in the desert live in really rocky, sandy soil that I almost wouldn't call soil. Also, there's plants that live under the water that only have sand to grow in. If you've ever seen an air plant before, there's plants that can grow just floating in like a glass ball with no water at all. You just have to spray them with water in order for them to grow. So plants don't all need soil to grow. It's more like vitamins for plants. Okay, we're gonna move on now. And we're gonna talk about things other than plants. So we learned that plants use photosynthesis to get their energy, but I can't just go sit out in the sun with a glass of water and breathe in carbon dioxide and be okay, right? Us as humans, we get our energy in different ways. So we're gonna talk about the food chain now. And I drew a little picture to help us out. So we learned today that the sun is the source of energy for all living things, right? So we have the sun here, and these arrows are representing the flow of energy. So this energy is flowing from the sun into this group called the producers. And the producers are basically all of the plants. They're the ones that have to use photosynthesis to make their own food, to make their energy. But then the energy gets passed from these producers to another group called consumers. And that's the group that we're in. We're the ones that have to consume or eat in order to get our energy. And that's the same for most animals and insects and things like that. 
And then the last group in the food chain are the decomposers. And if you can't tell from this picture, there's like a little worm here and a mushroom drawn. So the decomposers are the group that are breaking down dead stuff and turning it into soil. So they're really important. And they help to cycle all of this energy that's been flowing from the sun back into the soil. And then the plants can use that as extra nutrients too. So that is our food chain. Now take a minute and think of an example of a food chain that has a producer, a consumer, and a decomposer in it. Okay, I have a couple more questions for you guys. First off, can a producer eat a consumer? Think about that for a minute. Can a producer, can a plant eat a consumer or an animal? Mmm. Some of you guys might have thought of one special plant called the Venus flytrap, and they're really cool. They're a plant that can actually digest insects. They're pretty crazy. But I heard one time one of my friends had a Venus flytrap, and they were feeding it all of these flies, and they just kept feeding it flies, and it was really not doing well. It was like dying, and they couldn't figure out what was going on. And it turns out that they were keeping their plant far away from the window in like a dark corner of their room and it wasn't getting any sunlight and it wasn't growing. So that goes to tell us that even though some plants can eat consumers or digest consumers, they still need to have those other important parts of photosynthesis, photosynthesis in order to grow. Okay, next question. Can a consumer eat a producer? Yeah, I had a salad for lunch. I'm a consumer and I'm eating a producer. Can a consumer eat a decomposer? Hmm. Have any of you guys ever eaten a mushroom? Oh yeah, mushrooms are fungus, which is a type of decomposer. Have any of you guys ever eaten bread? Oh yeah, I had cinnamon rolls for breakfast and I baked them myself and I had to add yeast. And yeast is an example of another kind of fungus um, that we use all the time in bread when we're cooking to help it rise and get all nice and puffy. So I guarantee that all of you have eaten a decomposer. <laughs> hmm, let's see. How about, can a decomposer eat a producer? only after it's dead. So a decomposer can help to break down a producer, but only after it's dead. So a good example of that is like a worm that's um, eating a dead leaf that's fallen off of a tree. And they're working to break that down and turn it back into the soil. Totally. And same thing, a decomposer can also eat a consumer, but only after it's dead. All right. Well, I hope you guys learned a little bit about the food chain today. Have a great day! Whoosh! What's happening? Steelhead Jones here. Back at ya. Como estamos? Hope you all enjoyed the sun this weekend. El Sol. It's muy bien. Uh, I'm ready to do some secrets activities with you. Okay, our first activity. We're going to create a food chain. We're gonna do this using costumes though. We're not getting any real plants and animals out here to make our food chain and watch them eat each other. Once we have this food chain made, we're gonna see how energy flows through the food chain. How each organism is getting energy and using energy. First costume for our food chain. It's actually not an organism. It's the source of energy for all living things. What is it? The sun. We have the sun as our first costume. Second costume. The only organism that can use the sun's energy directly. What do we call those? 
green plants or the producers all right trees grass flowers producers next costume an organism that has to eat to get its energy consumer and we have a primary consumer like a grasshopper or a fly a mayfly maybe those are getting ready to hatch next consumer we have secondary consumer and this is going to be a little mouse beep 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 with a little tail then we get into the third consumers or tertiary consumers things like snakes or a hawk And finally, all of that energy goes to the last organism in any food chain. They're the natural recyclers. They take all of this material and they reuse it. They break it down, turn it into soil. We have the decomposers like mushrooms. Okay, we have our food chain, our food web set up here. Starts with the sun, source of energy for all living things. Then the first organism in any food web are the green plants. Then next we have the primary consumer, secondary consumer. Then the third consumer is the snake and the hawk. And finally ending with the mushrooms, the decomposers. Behind me here, I have this bucket full of water. And the water represents energy. Each one of these costumes are going to be represented by an empty yogurt container. All right, now the yogurt containers, what's gonna happen is when I say go, we fill up the bucket, the sun's bucket with water or energy. We get a bucket full of energy. We pour it into the green plants container. Then the green plant's gonna pour it into the grasshopper or the fly container. Fly or grasshopper into the mouse, mouse into the snake, snake into the hawk, hawk into the mushroom. Now these buckets have holes in the bottom, so there's going to be some energy leaking out. Some water is going to be falling out of the bucket. The mushroom does not have any holes because we're going to see how much energy we were able to get from the sun through each one of the organisms to the decomposers. Let's get this going. All right. We're going to see how this food chain works, how the energy gets passed down. Butterfly is going to do it for us here. Starting with the sun, going to the plants, then the consumers, all the way down to the decomposers. And then all of that material gets reused right back into the cycle. On your marks. Get set. Go. From the sunlight to the green plants. to the fly, onto the mouse, then to the snake, to the hawk, and finally to the mushroom. What? Where'd all the energy go? We started with a full cup. We ended with just a drop. Where's the energy going? What's happening to the energy? Ah. Uh each organism uses some of the energy before the next organism gets that energy. Should we do it again? Okay. All right, butterfly is gonna go through again. Here we go. Ready, set, go. From the sun, nice full cup of energy, to the green plant, onto the fly, then to the mouse, to the snake, to the hawk, and to the mushroom. Oh, a little more energy that time, but we're still losing a lot of energy. What else could we do? Oh, all the energy gets reused. Well, I want to figure out a way where we can get more energy. Maybe if the sun gives off more energy, then maybe each organism can use more energy. Let's try. From the sun, all the way to the sun. Go to the green plants, make them energy. Okay, well that helped. We got a little more energy in there that time. 
but we're still losing quite a bit of energy. So what is really happening to all of this energy other than the water just falling down on the ground because there's holes in our buckets? Ah, uh, each organism has to use some energy before it can give the energy to the next organism. So the sun gives off as much energy as it can. Then the green plant uses photosynthesis to turn the sun's energy into sugar energy it can use. Then the grasshopper, the flies come along, they eat the green plant, they eat the producers. Then they're flying around, life is good, until that mouse comes along and eats the grasshopper and gets all of that energy that the grasshopper hasn't used. Then eventually the snake comes slithering up and snacks on that mouse and gets all of that energy from the mouse. Then the hawk comes flying down, grabs the snake, eats the snake, gets all of that good energy. Eventually the hawk dies and the mushrooms and the decomposers break it down, turn it into soil. That's how the decomposers are getting their energy, breaking down dead stuff, turning it into soil. Well, what if there were fewer organisms in the food chain? For example, let's say that the mice die. There's a bunch of pollution and all the mice die. So no more mice to eat the grasshoppers and the flies. What's gonna happen to the grasshopper and fly population? It's gonna increase. There's gonna be grasshoppers and flies all over the place. Now what's gonna happen to the green plant population? Decrease, right? All these insects are out there eating all the green plants. Or maybe it's the deer, maybe the deer are overpopulated, they're eating all the green plants. And now we have fewer green plants, now we have erosion along the banks of rivers, the water's getting dirty, the water's warming up because there isn't shade from all the green plants, and it affects the entire ecosystem. So that's why we have laws to keep everything in the ecosystem, to protect all of the organisms, all of the plants and animals that are in the ecosystem are protected under state and federal laws. All right, is the mushroom a producer, a consumer, or a decomposer? Mushrooms are decomposers. How about the hawk? Producer, consumer, decomposer. Consumer. What about the snakes? Producer, consumer, decomposer. Consumer. What about the mice? Beep, 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 beep. Is that what mice sound like? I, I don't know. But they're consumers. What about the fly or the grasshopper? Consumer. Yeah. How about the green plants? The flowers, the grass, the trees. Well, the green plants are producers. They produce their own energy. What about the sun? Not an organism. So it's not a producer, consumer, or, an, or decomposer. The sun is the source of energy for all living things. Now, last thing here before we wrap up, check out this diagram. This is showing the sun giving off as much energy as it can, okay? Now, by the time we get to the, the producers, we've already lost some of that energy. Once we get to our first consumer, again, that grasshopper, the energy has decreased even more. Look at that. By the time we get to the second consumers, those mice and those kinds of things, look at the energy is gone even more. And once we get to the snake, about 90% of the energy has been used. So when we have people say, eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, it's not just because they're healthy for you. It's also because that's where most of the energy is available in our food web. Okay, your challenge for the week. I have two of them. First one is go try to find a food web around where you live. Okay, you can look out a window to do this. You can go outside to do this. But you look around and you look for a producer. Then you look for a consumer eating that producer, the primary consumers, things like uh, insects. Then you're gonna look for a consumer that might eat that primary consumer. So looking for a secondary consumer, like a bird, 
Squirrels could be a primary consumer. They could maybe also be a secondary consumer. The other challenge is just a question. See if you can think of an organism that does not get its energy from the sun, all right? Now, so it has to be an organism, it has to be something living. It can't be rock or water, it has to be an organism. Energy has to come from the sun. But can you think of an organism that doesn't get its energy from the sun? This is a hard one. I'm sitting here in the sun, but I can't photosynthesize, so I'm not getting energy, right? But I can eat an apple or an orange and that apple or orange came from a plant, a producer that was getting the energy from the sun. So even though I don't use the sun's energy directly, I'm still getting my energy from the sun because I'm eating organisms that are using the sun. Or if I eat a chicken, I could eat a chicken. That chicken is eating some grains. Those grains are green plants that are getting their energy from the sun. And when we say green plants, we say that because there are some plants that don't have any green and don't use energy from the sun. There's a purple and yellow flower that lives near the dowels that uh, is a parasite. It gets its energy by feeding off of grasses. So it lets the producers get their energy then this flower comes along and steals the energy from those producers. That's why we say only green plants can use energy directly from the sun. I found an example of a food web. Check this out. Look at this food web. There's a spider web right there with the spider on it. And there's an insect right there. So that insect was looking to eat the green plant. The spider's coming along and eating the insect. That's how you go find a food web. If you don't want to go look for a food web, then draw a picture of one, write a poem about one. Remember, keep calm, get your outdoors on. Ah! Huh?